Welcome back to Sportsline here on News Channel 5 Plus, a very special show joined by one of my favorite people, WWE Hall of Favor, legendary wrestler, the pride of Hendersonville, oh, Tender goodness. Tennessee, Double J, Jeff <laughs> Jarrett. Jeff, it's great to see you, man. John, it's great. Are you, do you follow any high school sports here? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Beach Buccaneers? Yeah. Yeah. They got, Lebanon took them down last week, but uh, so state tournament bound. The girls won today, so mm -hmm. I didn't know if you uh, get out into Oh, the, yeah. Yeah, we do. We do, especially on Friday nights with high school football yeah, sure. and stuff. We do a lot with that. All right, before we get into we're going to talk wrestling. we got we got to clear this Steph Curry thing up, oh, you and boy. me, okay? I'm a LeBron guy. Glo now, gloves folks, are off. Now, folks, well, most of you know Jeff was a terrific high school basketball player and a very, very good collegiate basketball player. And, you know, you're, you're you're much like Steph Curry. You're a shooter. You like you. You're, you're, I, you were a shooter back in the day. And Steph Curry, listen. And we got into this on my radio show with Greg Pogue uh, several months ago. My thing with Steph Curry is he's a terrific player. He's a Hall of Famer. He's deservedly one of the 75 greatest players in the NBA. He's the greatest shooter the sport has ever seen. Next to you. Uh, you know. No, my thing is that this whole thing of him being an underdog versus LeBron. I'm a LeBron guy, okay? LeBron grew up in the projects of Akron, Ohio. He, he, he bounced around from home to home. He's, a, uh, he's an American success story, yet he's the heel, and Steph Curry with the shimmy dancing and the mouthpiece and all this stuff, he's the baby face? I mean, come on. John, <laughs> are you feeling okay tonight? I feel fantastic. I got Jeff Jarrett live on Sportsline. So how tall is LeBron? 6'8". Uh, did he go to college? No. Okay. How tall is Steph? Was he about 6'2", 6'3"? 6'1", stretching it. Okay. Fair uh, enough. Did he go to college? Yes. Uh, was he heavily recruited out of high school? I do not believe so. No. <laughs> okay. Do I need to keep going down this path? When you step onto the basketball court, I'm not. We're not talking about upbringing. Mm -hmm. You're just. You're all glitz and glamour. You've got too much Hollywood in you. When you step onto the basketball court, and you have LeBron six eight, he mm -hmm. could have played. He could have been a tight end. He mm -hmm. could. I mean, who knows? He could have been a. I mean, do you think there's a better athlete in the world in their prime than LeBron James? No. Okay then, <laughs> Steph Curry. Steph Curry's a pretty good athlete. Oh, look, he plays pro basketball. He's a yeah. great athlete. But yeah, no. I'm just talking about when you match them athlete for athlete. Right. There, there's no comparison. I understand and, that, and so Jeff. Let me, hold on. I'm not done. <laughs> okay. <all right. laughs> let me go. So, LeBron, yes, he, he, he got his mid-range jumper down. Mm -hmm. I mean, he grew as a basketball player, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Steph Curry, he just has an overachieved. He's like defined the word overachiever a small carolina college yep and now he's not just he, i can't believe you just like oh he's top 75. <laughs> he's a top 10 of all time you can Na make the argument name a player in the last 20 years because i think that has not just been great changed the game of basketball the only guy that i can think of in, in that category is Allen Iverson but for a lot of different reasons. Some basketball, some off the court. But Allen Iverson kind of changed the culture of basketball. He changed how NBA players are viewed. But, but, see, see, you're, yeah. Are we talking about on court no, we're or talking, off but, court? But, but if you're talking on court, yes. Steph Curry changed the game. I he mean, it's, it's a perimeter game now. You and I both remember 90s basketball. You had to have if a you center. Did, if you didn't you have dump a it man, into the low yes. post. He waits for the double team. You kick out Go the way shooter. back. You had Moses Mo exactly. Malone and, and <laughs> exactly. the, the Sixers. But in the 90s, you had Ewing and Akeem Olajuwon yes. and Shaq and David Robinson, et cetera, Duncan, et cetera. And, and, and the, the yeah. stir, Spurs run all that. Sure. But Steph has changed. You're right. He, okay. So, <laughs> the underdog versus it's David versus I respect Goliath. him, but why has he got to do all the shimmy dancing? See, that's What's the only thing. The mouthpiece and the, sh and the uh, shimmy shaking. Let me shaking. ask you this. When I strutted, did that offend you? Oh, my God, yeah. I, I hated your guts. In the 90s, when you debuted with WWE, I was like, so somebody, what we're, what please we're really talking beat about the is, crap out of this guy. What we're really talking about is, is his shimmy offends you. Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. Because you're a LeBron fan. Uh, all right, that's we right. settled that, folks. All right, all right. Okay, easy, we'll move easy. on. We, we cleaned that up. NWA you know. Crockett Cup. All right, now you're going to be the special guest referee mm -hmm. for the world title match between Nick Aldis, who I'm going to talk to um, next week on talk of the town that we've had on the show before. Nick, great guy, former champion. 
And Matt Cardona, who's had an unbelievable year personally as a wrestler, joining Impact Wrestling and winning you know, championships all over the place, and now the NWA championship, what is going to be your involvement? How did you get involved to being the special guest referee for this match? Well, so they originally reached out. I've been around these parts a, a few days. Yeah. But when the Crockett <laughs> Cup uh, was signed on and they came here, the really the original um, request was be an ambassador for the brand. I'm six-time former NWA mm -hmm. champion. I, I grew up. Uh, Four-time WCW champion, I believe, yeah, correct? We're just talking NWA okay. right now. Okay, but okay. I, I like you know the stats. <laughs> Six-time Intercontinental champion, but right. I'm not That's a stat right. guy. <laughs> no. Um, but the NWA uh, brought me on as an ambassador to mm -hmm. do media, to do your show. I'm, I'm doing several, you know, do, doing the media. Doing the rounds. car wash. Yeah, exactly. Well, here you go. Do the car, <laughs> to do that. But then as sort of things transpired and... To my understanding, uh, everybody knows professional wrestling can change on a dime. Mm -hmm. And Mar uh, Matt Cardona, who, for the non-wrestling fan, uh, I, I don't even know how I can put this into words, but here, here's a guy that was a lifer in the WWE system. Yes. Um, just kind of, I don't want to call him a cookie cutter, but he was a uh, product of the WWE environment. And uh, during uh, the pandemic, um, they slashed like every corporate America did. And so Matt was uh, on the sideline twiddling his thumbs. Mm -hmm. He reinvented himself in so many ways. And like you said, he went out and won championships in just about every promotion that he entered, all the independents, game championships wrestling uh, impact I mean you name it and for him to step into NWA if I had to draw up a, a modern-day 2022 wrestler yeah he would be the least favorite person or the least uh, I, I, I was shocked when he became NWA champion because he True. represents everything really the NWA is not right on the flip side Nick Aldis uh, me and him have a storied um, Relationship. He, he came over from from England uh, ten years ago at TNA, and and uh, we went to India together. So me and Nick got a, a long history. So and he's a a former NWA champion. So those two guys meeting, uh, and they know. Uh, I guess in a lot of ways, is Double J going to show up? The Last Outlaw going to show up? The mm -hmm. Master going to show up? Am I going to bring the guitar? We're going to find <laughs> out. <laughs> We're going to find out. Yeah, because you special know, special guest referee. When you, well, yeah, when you hear the phrase Jeff Jarrett is special guest referee, you know something could happen. <laughs> <laughs> so it will happen. <laughs> just what will happen? Okay. So is it basically just going to be you know how the match goes and you how you're going to. You know, play it by ear and see what happens, or are you gonna, or are you planning on just calling this thing right down the middle? So what I've really sort of landed on this, it's Sunday, March twentieth. Yep. And when I wake up on the twentieth, mm -hmm. if Karen's nice to me, <laughs> then Nick Aldis may be in luck. If Karen's not nice to me, my wife, mm -hmm. if I. You know, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Folks, Karen's in studio with me t tonight, so That's I'm right. just having fun. That's great. Great, um, great having your wife, Karen, here, by the way. Yes. It, uh, hey, it's great. We had a nice dinner downtown with some yeah. folks from Fox Sports. Yeah, and, you're a busy man. You and know? I had a good time. But no, um, it's going to be the intrigue is there. And I, I've had some conversations offline with, with different folks, mm -hmm. and they. Look, you understand the industry, and look, at most everybody watching this understands the industry that, hey, folks, we're not true sport, uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of intrigue, there's a lot of yeah. drama, yeah. a lot, lot of suspense, and so I think um, without me in the mix, it's Aldis versus Cardona for the NWA title, I, I, I want to watch that. Mm -hmm. Throw Double J in the mix, I think we got a good recipe, I'll say that. And you mentioned it, Billy Corgan's done a great job with this entire, yeah. you know, promotion and bringing back old school studio style wrestling that you and I grew up on, yep. right? And that's something that, you know, in the world of, um, matter of fact, I did my round of media today for my world, and a guy was asking about the evolution of the industry, and I said, look, the golden age of cable television was mm -hmm. in the 90s. Yep. We're 20 years removed from that. We're in the streaming world, and and so, um, you know, my kids, uh, you know, the younger ones, they're the YouTube generation. You can watch wrestling from Mexico, from, from yeah. Japan, yeah. from Europe. 
obviously the WWE and now uh, AEW. They're all slick and the glamour and all the high level production. But at the end of the day, you know, I grew up on, you know, Memphis wrestling and yep. it was seen here on Channel 2 and Channel 5 this station one time and Channel mm -hmm. 30. And that's that studio wrestling where it's all about the storytelling and about the action and about the wrestling. So NWA has slicked it up. Uh, they've got a great relationship with Fight, F I T E, the streaming mm -hmm. app. Uh, that's where you can catch their product every Tuesday. And so the brand that Billy Corgan acquired a couple of years ago and what it is now, it's, uh, it's really a success story. And he's, he's worked hard at it. And I'm, I wonder, Jeff, you know, because you and I are around the same age, you know, I try to understand that the wrestling fan has changed. Their, their wants have changed. Their needs have changed. I'm old school, man. I'm <laughs> Jeff Jarrett. I'm Ric Flair. I'm The Rock. I'm Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, I want to see a fight. I don't necessarily want to see a guy do eight flips and, and all this 450 uh, splash and tope suicida and all this type of stuff. Am I being unreasonable? Am I just being like, old man, get off my lawn? Where, well, where do you come out on that? Uh, you know, I have a, a, a it's a, um, I always like to draw analogies back to sports, but can you imagine a, a basketball game without a three-point line now? No. No. It, it, it's and I'm old enough to remember when they played yeah, basketball. Look at, no, it's uh, it came in right after I. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, uh, but no, it, it, and so, you know, uh, they, they talk about NFL football. You know, guys can't go. I mean, it, it's almost impossible to defend now. It's an offensive-minded game. Yeah. They're going downfield. Yeah. You see the stats. It's just the game is played differently. Well, wrestling is different. And so it's evolving mm -hmm. with the times. Uh, but I still think, just like you said, that, they, you know, look, there's a safety and head injuries in, yep. in our sport as well as football and, and, and basketball to a lesser degree. So the business has evolved, um, but I still believe the very fundamentals of what we do is uh, the the talent connecting emotionally yes. with, with the fans and I, I think that's never going to go away it's just like basketball the bottom line is you got to put the ball in the basket that's right. simple football uh, Tannehill and the offense mm -hmm. got to get one yard second and I, I won't bring that up but no, yeah, but no it, it, yeah. it's literally scoring and mm -hmm. so in wrestling you can integrate 15 flips you can have no flips. You can have whatever it is. At the end of the day, you got to connect emotionally, and you literally have to make the people want to see who's going to win and who's going to lose. That's never going to change. No question about it. All right, we come back. I want to talk about your podcast with the podfather, Conrad Thompson. Oh. It is one of the best podcasts that you will listen to, folks. Uh, more with Jeff Jarrett, the legend, right here on Sportsline. Stay with us.